Hello and welcome to the Kentucky History Education Conference. I understand the theme of this conference is communication and history. What better time than this moment in history to appreciate the role of communication in education? The technology at our disposal continues to bridge gaps for our students and develop our classrooms, both in person and virtual, into more effective learning environments. We're certainly putting that to good use today, and I'm sure by now you are all very familiar and probably quite adept at navigating these digital events. This pandemic has forced us all to adapt and to make sacrifices, and I am proud to say that our schools have met this challenge with courage and compassion. Not only has our transition to NTI been a huge success, but you have gone beyond the bounds of your duties to make sure that no child goes without food, support, and learning in their homes. For me, there's always been a strong connection between my work as a social studies teacher and my passion for civic engagement. The future of our state, country, and world rely on future generations to become empowered participants of a diverse democratic society in an interdependent world. That's why your work as social studies teachers has never been more important. As our world becomes smaller and smaller, the opportunities for our kids continue to grow. Students today are not just communicating with their friends across town, they're communicating with their friends across the globe, and that's historic. There is power in the hands and minds of young people, and with great power comes great responsibility. Our jobs as social studies teachers is to show students how to use their power responsibly, how to communicate with care. But if there's one thing I know about the people in this virtual room, it's this. Public education was made to meet this moment. Public education is welcoming to new ideas. Public education is responsive to the changing needs of our students. I'll give you one example as it relates to Kentucky social studies standards during COVID-19. In April, Interim Commissioner of Education Brown and I issued a waiver to suspend the requirement for students to pass a 100 question civics test to graduate from high school for the 2019-2020 school year. While most students had already completed this requirement, a small number of students had not done so prior to Governor Bashir's recommendation to suspend in-person classes. There is an online option that will satisfy the requirement, but we recognize that not all students have the computer access that they need. The suspension of this statute removes a barrier to graduation for students who would otherwise graduate this spring. Though we had to sacrifice the requirement of one standardized test, we were able to get more diplomas to students who had already worked so hard to earn one. Our system should always be prepared to make these kinds of changes when necessary. And when we work together in the classroom and in the halls of the Capitol building, we can get that done. Governor Bashir and I have said that our administration's priority is education. This virus hasn't changed that. We are going to make sure that our teachers and students have the support they need through this pandemic and long after it's over. You can count on us to remember teachers, to protect your interest, and to value your work. That work may continue to look a little different for a while, but our goals remain the same. So let's continue the good work we've already begun. Let's continue to prepare our students for the future. Let's prepare them to engage civically. Let's prepare them to communicate with care. I'm excited for the future of public education in this state, and I'm so grateful that we are all on Team Kentucky ready to get it done. Thank you for everything you do, and I hope to see you in person very soon.